and welcome to Mando Bug Crafts episode 99. What's up everybody? My name is Amanda but you may know me on the internet as Mando Bug and this is my crafty channel here on YouTube where I like to share the things that I am making. So in this video today there will be knitting, crochet, sewing, spinning, clay stuff, design stuff, it's chocked full of stuff. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep it kind of short. I know it's been three months since I last put out a video, or maybe over that, over three months. Oops. Um, well, I'll talk more about that in the let's chat section about where I've been and what's been going on. But, starting the shot with something I've learned. So, I've learned a lot since I've last recorded. I am one of those people who's just continually learning. I love to learn anything and everything. It's just what gets me excited. So uh, I'm just going to share one thing that I learned most recently that you might find interesting. I have signed up for Blueprint, which is the new rebranded Craftsy Unlimited subscription service where you can get all the Craftsy classes at your disposal. I mean, you can watch anything you want at any time. So I decided to check out a crochet class called Crochet Toolkit. And I learned about twisted stitches for crochet. Now, I know about twisted stitching and knitting, but I didn't know about twisted stitches in crochet. I do have to say that it doesn't have it as dramatic of an impact as I feel like twisted stitches and knitting does. Well, and even then, it's not that dramatic. Um, it's something that you notice, but it's not something where you're like, whoa, this changes everything, you know? So um, there is a way to do twisted stitches, just like with knitting. It all depends on how you enter your stitch. Um, so I definitely recommend checking out twisted stitches if you've never seen them before. Um, and also, the crochet toolkit, if you have um, a subscription to Blueprint, go check it out if you like crochet. It's got a pretty good wide array of um, just kind of tips and techniques that are cool to have under your crochet, um, I meant to say in your crochet tool belt, <laughs> but I didn't want to say under your tool belt because that doesn't make any sense. So, um, but yeah, I mean a lot of the tips and techniques I already knew, but it was nice to hear them in a different way and um, you see them used in some ways that I haven't tried using them before. So um, it's, I mean, the class covers everything from foundation stitches to extended stitches that will link in the round, which was interesting. Um, a bunch of different ways to do crochet ribbing, which I think I've talked about my thoughts on that on the podcast before. Um, and what else? I mean, there's just a wide variety of um, techniques that. Um, I think it's nice to sharpen up your skills. Um, so, yes, don't want to ramble on anymore about that, but crochet twisted stitches are a thing. No, it's not really anything that special, but it's nice to know, um, to just be aware of kind of how you would do it and what kind of effect you get. So moving on to finished objects. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have a ton, and I don't even know if I have them all here. So let's go through it. So I grabbed my Agnes top. Now I remember talking about this in my last video because I was doing the crafty bug so along with Stephanie and then I dropped off the face of the earth. I tried to maintain a little bit of um, contact in the Ravelry forums when I found time um, but sorry to those of you um, that were looking for more videos during that time. Um, it just was not in my schedule. Again I'll talk about that later but um, the sew along ended a couple months ago and um, I did send the prize out to the winner. She got some fabric, um, hopefully to make something nice. Uh, so uh, yes, the Agnes top. I sew, I've sew. i sewn two versions of it now. The first one, which I believe is this one, just looking at it, it's much smaller. Um, I showed you guys in the last video, it was way too tight. I mean the bust wasn't too bad, but around my midsection I felt like I couldn't breathe and my sleeves were just... Oh, it was unbearably tight, too small. So I re-sewed the pattern uh, two sizes larger. Um, I did the same grading I did before. I went in, out a size on the waist. So it stayed the same on the top and the hips, I think, but I went out in the waist area. But I went overall two sizes up. And now the bust is way too big and the biggest issue is the neckline. This neckline is so wide and the um, scoop is so low that when I bend over the whole shirt just 
shows everything. So um, shouldn't I shouldn't have gone down too small on the bust, but if I stayed the same size in the bust, my arms would have stayed that tight. So I'm just thinking this wasn't a good pattern to fit my body. Um, I have, I mean, I have a pear-shaped body, which this is a pear-shaped pattern, but um, this pattern is for someone that's really curvy. So big chest, big hips, little waist, and I don't have a big chest. I have a small chest, a medium-sized waist, and big hips. So the small chest I've found in my beginning garment sewing career um, is just tight, too tight in my arms. So I'm going to have to figure out how to address that when I go to making patterns fit me. If anyone else has a small bust and kind of larger arms and runs into this problem, please let me know your tips and techniques because um, otherwise I'm just going to be wander wandering around the internet trying to find answers <laughs> so um so yeah that's kind of a bummer i did like the way that this top fit me in the midsection and hips it was a little more loosey looser still tight but not stretched to the fabric's maximum capacity <laughs> um but yeah, so just the top's not working it for me. So I'm going to see if there's someone I can gift this top to that's interested in that it will fit better. Because it, I can't wear it. Same with the small top. I can't wear it, so. Also, I'm not going to put the top on because it is hot. I'm dying in my tank top right now. Um, but I, w I will for you guys. I'll put on my next finished object because I feel like you have to. You knit a sweater, you have to put it on. So... This was nuts, you guys. This is the Beekeeper Cardigan by Maureen Green, and I knit it in four days. She hosted a four-day knit-along challenge to knit this cardigan. She knit it in four days. She challenged everyone during the knit-along to knit it in four days, um, and it actually scaled up. If you knit larger sizes, you could add more days on because, I mean, let's be fair, I knit the smallest size. That's not really fair to those that knitted larger sizes. Um, although I did do full length sleeves instead of three quarter and I knit the body longer, but as you'll see, not as long as it ended up being. I didn't intend to make it that long, but it's okay. It's still comfortable. So I knit this um, sweater out of Haiku Sueño in the rust colorway. It's this lovely orange. Um, when I was picking colors out for the sweater, I kept grabbing the blues and grays and I already had two gray sweaters, I frogged one, um, and I have a blue and gray striped sweater. So I'm like, I need to get away from this blues and grays. It's comfortable. Um, it's safe. But I love orange, and I'm so happy I branched out and went for a brighter, I mean, it's still, it's rust. It's not that bright, but it's not blue and gray. So um, I'm very happy that I went with this yarn, and um, this sweater is a nice raglan shape, um, seamless sweater design and it's got these really fun textured areas that we were calling bees um, in the knit along um, and then it's also got you know just a nice little ribbing front band um, ribbing on the cuffs and the bottom um, and then it also I really enjoy the neck shaping uh, because this cardigan like hugs you and doesn't fall off so I'll put it on show you I hope you guys appreciate this because it is hot. It's hot in here, hot in here. And um, you'll get to see that my shorts don't match my shirt probably. So we'll see how that goes. I'm not big on matching uh, clothes all the time. So, <laughs> uh, but anyways, here is the way that the neck is fitted. And I absolutely, absolutely love that um, because this little shaping that's done here just hugs to your chest and your sweater doesn't go anywhere. Well, cardigan, your cardigan doesn't cardigan doesn't go anywhere. I'm so used to cardigans that have no front and then they just do this or even worse they start falling off your shoulders. But because uh, because Marie started with a 32 inch bust size which is my bust size I could actually knit the size that fits me. So you can tell um, from the back. Look from my armpit to armpit. There is not a lot of, I mean, there's the ease that's supposed to be there. I usually have excessive ease in this area of my sweaters because I'm knitting the 34 inch size because that's usually the smallest size in the pattern. Um, so it's, first of all, it's amazing to have a sweater that fits me. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, that also helps it stay on as well. 
Um, I went for full length sleeves, which is nice because you can always push them up if you want um, and still get that three quarter look. Um, and then I knit, the sweater is supposed to be cropped. I knit it to be cropped, but that didn't turn out for me. Let me stand on my chair here. So you can see how far it just went. I knit it probably to here, naturally here, and it grew that much in blocking. Now, I knew that this sweater was going to block long because the yarn content has bamboo in it. And also this stitch pattern is like, it's got dropped stitches in it, or no, not drop stitches, knit one belows in it. And that is kind of shrunken up as you're knitting it. But once you actually block it, it fully pulls out um, kind of the dropped stitches that you let go of when you knit one below. And it grows in length. Um, my swatch didn't grow that much in length. Um, and then the pattern she recommended, it, it's going to grow about two inches more depending on your yarn content. So I kind of had an idea of two to four inches, but I think it really grew somewhere closer to six to eight inches. You can even see in my sleeves, if I pull them all the way out, um, just how long they are. And I stopped about here. So all that is growth. So um, if you knit this sweater out of something that's got some fiber characteristics that are going to grow your yarn, um, take even more uh, into consideration as you knit. I could have probably knit on this sweater like five or six less hours and still got a decent fit. So um, speaking of knitting the sweater in four days, if you're curious, I didn't time myself, but because it was only in four days, I have a good idea of how long it took me to knit this sweater. Definitely over 40 hours. Definitely. Um, I would say the first day I maybe knit eight hours, um, but the second, third, and fourth days were well over 10 hours, closer to 12 hours. I know for sure. I mean, I was basically knitting all day, especially, actually, especially those last two days. I just knit, knit, knit. And on the very last day, um, I was like, I wasn't pressuring myself to finish in four days, but I saw that it was achievable. And so on the last day, um, Josh really helped me out by, you know, helping with the kids and cooking and cleaning. Um, uh, cause my brother actually came to visit the last day, um, in the evening. So he was like helping me wrap it up before they got there. So he helped clean up the house and I super appreciated that. I thought it was a nice way to support my silly knitting goals. <laughs> But I, I love this sweater. I haven't worn it because it's just, it's summertime. So um, I've kind of just had it folded up, put to the side, uh, ready for winter. So love, love, love this sweater. Um, and a lot of people have knit it and it looks great on everybody. This is just so, such a simple um, shaped sweater that, you know, it's, it's flattering on everybody. So the beekeeper cardigan absolutely love it. Don't ever want to knit a sweater in four days ever again. That was intense. Um, I don't think I knit for like another week after that. I was like just burnt out. Luckily, I am multi-craftual and there are so many other crafts that I did instead. Um, so what else? Oh, I finished my hand spun socks. This, I feel like this took forever. Um, so this was some hand spun yarn, uh, Romney Mohair Lester, um, sliver that I spun up into a two ply. The body is a bundle of Rolex from By the Lakeside, or maybe By the Lakeside was the name of the colorway, and the company was. I don't know. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> uh, I thought that these were going to stripe up a little bit more than they did. Uh, I mean, there's very subtle striping, but I realized after I started spinning the Rolex that they there were kind of two color sets. So once I realized that, I started alternating one of the blue or one of the grayers. And um, and then I two-plied them together. And I got quite a fine fingering weight. And that's what took so long. The stitches don't look necessarily that small. But look at the row height. The row height is ridiculously small. Um, I don't think I actually measured gauge because all I really cared about was circumference fit. And they fit. But boy, I mean, I just feel like that was a million rows and these aren't even that tall, but I used all of my hand spun. I think it was just shy of three ounces of fiber, the Rolag bundle. So, um, 
I'm super happy with them. The only thing is this Mohair Lester Romney uh, has no give to it. Um, and Stephanie from the Crafty Garden podcast was tell talking with me about how um, longer longer wools um, have a lot less give, especially if they have a lot less crimp. So, uh, I mean, it kind of just kind of hugs my toe a little tighter than I would like. I like negative ease in my socks, but if you have a yarn that doesn't stretch, negative ease means it doesn't fit. Um, they fit, they're just snug, specifically on my toes because of the wedge. You know, this wedge shape, shape it's tight here. So um, that was kind of a bummer, and I don't think I'm gonna be using this type of wool for hand spun socks anymore just because I like stretch in my socks. I like them to be tight fit. So um, just a heads up um, about that. Uh, that was a surprise for me. So uh, I just did a vanilla sock on these by the way. No specific pattern. Um, I used my triple zeros to get a normal sock gauge. I didn't measure it but it's probably somewhere close to eight or nine sti stitches to an inch is what it looks like. So I've also finished a bunch of spinning like a bunch of spinning. This doesn't even fit in there, there's so much. So this is all hand combed, hand spun from a fleece that was hand washed, of course. So I have a bunch of white, some of it I haven't even tagged, well, the last two skeins I haven't even tagged. Well wait, am I missing some? Five. All right, I had to figure out if I was missing skeins or just miscounted, and somehow I think I just miscounted. So anyways, this is a fleece that I was gifted years ago, I think like three years ago. No, I've been living in Washington for almost three years, like four or five years ago. Uh, and I was kind of sitting on it, waiting to process it, because I was working on the BFLs. That wasn't going very well, and so I stopped, and then I moved, and then storage, and... I'm getting around to it now. <laughs> and I split the whole fleece up into white sections and dark sections. And in the areas that I couldn't separate the white and dark, I blended them together on the drum carter. And um, Dingo was a mostly white Jacob sheep. And he had just a couple spots of brown. So here is all of the dark brown that I've spun up. This is all three ply, um, all chain plied. Uh, so I've got three skeins and they're all everything is about worsted weight some of it's a DK but overall it's mostly worsted um, but it looks like I got about um, just shy of 300 yards here and then I spun up all the blended which is where the brown and white couldn't be separated and it looks great but technically it is I mean brown and white so but it looks gray it's just beautiful beautiful very happy now you can see this one looks different than these two this one I spun around the in the first year that I got the fleece and um, one of the biggest issues with this fleece was that I washed it but I washed it in two large of batches and I didn't get enough of the lanolin out um, so I had to rewash it before I did these, but this one was still pretty full of lanolin, which made it difficult to comb because it was very sticky. And um, I think because of its stickiness, it's more of a compressed fiber too. But I didn't have a drum carter, I don't think yet, when I did this. I don't remember. I think I just combed it. And so it didn't get as blended as these two. So um, this will stripe, and you can see it because it's chain plied. Those light colored areas are all together, whereas this is more uniformly blended. But so I've got three more here, and it looks like like 250 yards here. So all about in the same range. Um, I didn't meticulously weigh these out. I just kind of grabbed a bunch, combed it into little nests, and then spun it till my bobbin looked like it was full. Because it, 
I'm not being too particular. Um, I just want to spin. Um, and if you haven't noticed, I'm spinning, spinning, spinning. I haven't made anything. I'm hoping to spin up a sweater's quantity. I don't have a pattern in mind yet. I do have the Coco Knit Sweater Workshop book that I bought back at Vogue Knitting. And I'm thinking about following that. It's like a worksheet to knit the patterns you fill in the worksheet. I'm thinking about that, possibly using these colors to throw in my own color work in areas. But here is all of the white that I had. I thought I had two more skeins, but I think I would know if I lost them. I've been keeping them together. Two of these are not marked yet because they just got finished a couple days ago. Uh, but they're all, I mean, they're about 50 grams, about 70 yards each. And I mean, this has been a ton, a ton of work, but I'm super happy with the result. Um, I've worked really hard to comb these and remove the veg matter and second cuts. And even as I spin, I find I'm picking out little second cuts and I have a little pile of second cuts on the floor, um, or neps or whatever. Um, but I've, I've been enjoying spinning this and um, because it's summertime and it's hot, I've been watching on Instagram, watching, I've been browsing Instagram and a lot of people that I follow have been solar dyeing, which just look like so much fun. And I have recently been gifted a bunch of acid dyes. So I decided to test out some of the colors on the white Jacob fleece that I have because let me show you. I still have a whole lot so I am not worried about having enough to spin up a sweaters quantity I'm thinking that I'm probably gonna need a these are 50 gram approximately 50 gram Hanks I'm probably gonna need about 12 of these maybe more um, but I have I wanted to have 12 white if I get 12 white I'll have plenty so I've got five which means I'm one skein, one skein away from halfway there and I feel like I've barely made a dent in the fleece. So I have been solar dyeing some of the white fleece just in a mason jar with some vinegar and some acid dye. What I do, I think it's a pint sized jar, um, is I add up a little bit of like lukewarm water and then I add maybe like a quarter cup of vinegar. I just splash it in. I haven't been measuring anything. And then I just kind of sprinkle in anywhere between like a half teaspoon to a teaspoon of dye. Again, not measuring, just kind of eyeballing, and because uh, I'm not really concerned about the amount. <laughs> I'll worry about that if I'm trying to repeat what I'm doing. I really just want to get an idea of what color the dye is, um, because how much dye you use in, compared to how much wool you're dyeing is going to give you a different, I think the word is value of color it doesn't actually change the color you just get a different value of color so not measuring out I won't know like what is full strength what is too much dye that I'm putting in um, but I like I said I'm not concerned about that right now so far with what I've been dyeing I have exhausted the dye baths completely so I could have added more dye and I'm not wasting anything and if at some point I find that I've used more dye than the wool would take then I'll just dye something else with that water until I exhaust the bath. So I don't know why I went on that tangent. Uh, I started with periwinkle. I just, I didn't even measure. I just crammed a bunch of raw wool into that pint jar after it had the dye and vinegar all mixed up. Topped it off with more water if the wool absorbed all the water. Put the lid on, put it up in direct sunlight, and just let it sit for several hours. And by midday, when it's at its hottest, I would come feel it, check to see if the dye bath was exhausted. If it was, then I would just soak it twice to let the vinegar wash out and to see if the dye bled, which it didn't. Um, then I put it out on my drying rack to dry, and then I combed the periwinkle, and I've actually spun some of it up. So I ended up with four nests. And I think I ended up with 35 grams of combed fiber. Of course, when you comb, there's waste. So I should be, to not waste dye, I should be combing before I dye it, but that's a lot of work and I'm too excited, so I've been wasting a little bit of my dye, but I'm not concerned with it. Uh, but yeah, so all, all in all, it was 35 grams, and I spun half of it into this little mini mini hank. I've been, I spun it the same way I've been doing my sweater spin, just a three ply shooting for worsted weight. And it looks, looks like I got it. 
and this is just this is a beautiful beautiful color so this is periwinkle um, jacquard acid dye and I think it just dyed up beautifully I do think you could get a deeper richer color with it like I said um, I didn't really go for the power I just wanted to see the um, how it was gonna die up so yesterday I did pink and that's outside drying today and then today I'm doing steel gray again those are the exact names of the jacquard acid dyes and I figured I'll get myself like a little mini swatch of the colors that I was gifted to kind of see what the colors do on their own so I have an idea of um, what I want to do when it comes time to mix and play so that is what I've been doing in the sun <laughs> and then um, I guess that was works in progress I should have mentioned transitioning over into works in progress I have been continuing to comb and spin the fleece um, but I've been doing colors lately to kind of break up all this white spinning which I do have to say hasn't been as boring as I thought because I have a goal in mind I have a sweater in mind so um, yeah I've also been doing a little bit of knitting. I've been doing a lot more crochet lately than knitting, but I, since we last spoke on YouTube, um, because I'm always on my Instagram account <laughs> and sometimes on my Facebook account, but um, since we last spoke on YouTube, I have knit a ton on the Speckle and Pop Shawl by Stephen West. And uh, the row, I'm in the middle of a row because the rows are so long. It is, shawl pattern at this point is so daunting it's just it's massive I'm very excited for it to be done but with it being summer I can't wear it and it's a lot to haul around so there's kind of like this wedge shape which goes for me it goes from white to purple to blue and you end up picking stitches up along the bottom of it and just knitting 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 and um I think I have somewhere around 900 stitches on the needles. I think it's technically in the high 800s. I don't remember for sure. And I'm knitting a chevron. I laugh because the chevron section, you could choose between two options. You could just do garter stitch or you could do the brioche option. And I like brioche, so I chose the brioche option, but it's not all brioche. It's a chevron pattern where half of the chevron's in garter and the other half is in brioche. And that is what's really slowing me down, really making me pay attention, and really taking forever. So uh, he recommends that you put stitch markers on every, oh, I'm not, I don't really remember at this point, but I want to say somewhere around 12 stitches. So I have, I don't know, like 80 stitch markers on my needles every stitch marker I own pretty much so none of them match it's just a giant mess of stitch marker jewelry <laughs> but I haven't worked on this a lot lately but I do want to get it off my needles I there were three main colors and a bunch of mini skeins I have already used all of my first main color so actually no not the first the last it was a partial skein but I had barely taken anything out of it all I have left is main color one and main color two, and there's not a lot left. The bind off is done in the mini skeins, so I don't have to worry about having enough of these. I'm just going to knit these until they run out. I don't know if I have enough yarn to knit the full repeat that he recommends in the pattern, but it's not going to be a big deal. I'll just have a little bit shorter of a section um, because I wasn't even supposed to bring in this color again, but he said if you run out of your third color, bring back in your second. So. Um, yeah, I'm supposed to do like, I think 14 more rows, but I don't know if my yarn will get me that far because these rows are so long, but I, I will see. We'll see. I'll just knit until they run out and then do my bind off, which is I-cord. So I-cord binding off like almost 900 stitches will take forever. I still have weeks of knitting left on this shawl, but um, I just really haven't been motivated to work on it because of its size and its heat with it's too hot too hot to be knitting with this in my lap so uh, I may pick that up as the weather starts to cool off um, what else oh that's all I had for works in progress besides going into design time so design times kind of the section where I talk about 
what I've been designing and my progress with designing various things. I frogged a bunch of stuff. Um, I frogged a tank top and a hat that wasn't working out for me. Uh, but I have finished some things. One of the shawls that I finished I'm not going to show because I don't want to share that until it's been tech edited and it's tested. So I'm going to hold off on that. But I'll show you, because I don't remember if I've showed you before, the hat. The Oh Yes hat. So this is the Oh Yes hat to match the Oh Yes cowl. It's crocheted using Haiku O. And um, I don't remember if I've showed you because I hadn't written it up yet. But it's just a simple little nice warm beanie that's got that same stitch pattern as the Oh Yes cowl. Um, I'm going to be getting this tech edited soon and then I'll have it tested and then I'll have this available. So, um, yeah, this has been a lot of fun. For the crown decreases, to keep them nice and consistent with the pattern, I kind of pushed a couple stitches together in a decrease pattern that I haven't seen before. So, um, I'm going to have, um, my tech editor help me make sure that it follows crochet standards and makes sense and is achievable so everyone can have the nice patterned crown. Um, speaking of tech editing, so I have had my patterns tech edited before, but um, that's mostly when I work with companies and I haven't actually had any of my personal personally released, independently released patterns tech edited before. So I was following along in a Facebook group where someone was talking about tech editors and someone brought up this Facebook group called the Tech Editor Hub. And uh, so I joined the group and it's full of tech editors. It's run by um, Jolie who runs a tech editor masterclass where you learn to become a knitting tech editor where most of the stuff applies to crochet as well but it's focused on knitters and then all of these students of hers are in this group so it's a great place to go to find a tech editor find out more about tech editing and it just so far um, it's been a great community to be a part of so yeah so I I will be getting my hat pattern tech edited um, and from here on out the patterns that I release will be um, tech edited which costs money so a lot of these patterns are probably not going to be free um, the free patterns that I put out with companies they tech edit the patterns for me they're really the ones bought paying for the pattern so um, just kind of wanted to mention that uh, Oh, also in that tech editor hub, someone linked to this style sheet that I thought was awesome. I ended up purchasing it myself and I've um, been using it as well. So a style sheet for designers is basically a, a format that you can use for all of your patterns to make sure that they all are the same style really so that you see a pattern and you go, oh, that's a so-and-so's pattern. Um, it's just nice to have that um, What's the word? Um, it's all even, consistent. The consistency. It's nice to have that consistency from pattern to pattern. Um, so I have been working on creating my own style sheet so that all of my patterns do look the same. Um, so the only other thing that I have to talk about for design time are these two cuties right here. So these are um, Cuddle Monsters, which is the pattern that I designed for the August Crochet Along Together with Cassell, and it is a furry little amigurumi pattern, and it is just adorable. Adorable, adorable. So this one I did for my son. I left the eyelashes off of him, and um, this is the very first one I did. I did for my daughter, and you can see it's bigger. I used a bigger hook. I decided to go down in hook size after making it. Um, you can also see the horns are a little wonky. Um, I made them both exactly the same before I realized that ah, the left one needs to be mirrored to the right one. So um, one kind of curves up and back, one kind of curves up and forward. <laughs> Uh, whereas with this one, I mirrored the pattern so that the horns mirror each other. And 
yeah, other than that, they're pretty much exactly the same, and my kids absolutely love these guys. They saw me making them before the pattern was released, and they just kept asking, can I have them, can I have them, and I wouldn't let them have them because I wanted to make sure we got good photos of them in case they got them dirty, and um, I mean, they've been playing with these things nonstop, and they are pretty... Um, hard wearing, I think is the right word. Um, they have stood the test of play and a lot of it has to do with how well I sewed them together but also um, the base yarn that I carried the novelty yarn with was Simplicity which is a merino acrylic nylon blend. It is a workhorse yarn. It is very very strong so that's most of the reason why these hold together. The caribou that I use that's the fuzzy yarn um, it's a little more frail and that's what gives you that soft um, feel but it's carried with the Simplicity so you get the structure and the strength and then the caribou gives you the fun fuzz because these guys would not be as cute if they weren't fuzzy. They would be cute but not as cute and they definitely wouldn't be as soft and cuddly. Um, their bodies are round which means these guys fly through the air so well. Um, one game that my kids and I have been playing with these is they've got a indoor trampoline in their room. Yes, grandma spoiled the kids a couple years ago for Christmas. I did not buy them an indoor, tra indoor trampoline. I don't think any parent buys their kid an indoor trampoline. But, so my kids have one and it's, you know, got all the safety stuff so it's totally fine and safe. Um, but the top is open so the kids get in the trampoline and they jump and they have their monsters and then they throw the monster out of the top and I catch it and then I throw it back in. That has been the game of choice with these guys because they they throw so well and they're really really soft. So um, especially since this is the size that you get it's even easier to throw. Um, so and it's super snuggly. It's just big and round and yeah that's enough about the cuddle monsters. As you can tell I love I love this design. I designed it for my kids. My kids love this design. So it's a free pattern up on Ravelry right now. We're currently in week two, so um, a portion of the pattern is released each Thursday for the next two weeks. It'll be four weeks total, and then the full pattern will be out and available free. There are video tutorials that I filmed that are supplementary to the pattern to help you work with the um, eyelash yarn and also to help you with seaming and things like that. It's full of, full of all the tips that I have from my experience crocheting uh, toys. So um, check it out if you're interested. Um, and if you finish um, within the time frame, you can go to crochetalongtogether.com to check out all the details, but if you finish within the time frame um, and you're a U.S. citizen, you can submit um, a photo of your finished object in a entry form um, to be entered into prizes that Scassell is donated to the Crochet Along. So yes, all of that. <laughs> I need some coffee. Oh my gosh, I put up a blind in here because if he, if you've been watching for a while, you know I broke my blinds on camera, um, I don't know, months ago. So I just put up a quick curtain today because the sun was just blinding, but the curtain is like attracting the heat, I think, and it's just heating up in here. And uh, we just have one little AC unit in our window in the kitchen and I usually keep this door shut so it keeps the central part of the house cool and this room just... Oh, it gets sweltering. Side notes. Hey, what's up? You get to learn more about me. Friends, <laughs> like, nah, we don't care if you're hot. Like, just tell us about your crafts. <laughs> uh, what else? I'm looking at my notes. Oh, we're moving on to Let's Chat anyways. So, perfect segue. This is the area where I talk about things that are usually not crafty related, more personal. So, if you're not interested, I will see you in my next video. Not sure when that's going to be, just to be honest. Just uh, subscribe to the channel and then you'll see my videos pop up in your feed when they come out. And then it'll be like a nice little surprise, like, oh look, there's Amanda again. <laughs> uh, so, I was going to talk about why I've been gone for three months, right? Some of you may want to know. Again, if you're not interested, you don't have to stay and hang around. Uh, so... Oh, I forgot to share some things. Did I even have this right written down? I did. Just kidding, don't leave. They probably are. They're probably already gone. <laughs> uh, design time. I started a new design um, that's still super in the works, which I don't mind sharing because it's 
super far down the road, but what I really wanted to share about it was the yarn. So it's hard to see. This is a lacy pattern. Um, I'm still working on it. I really should have something solid so you can see it better. Um, I'm still working on it. I'm trying to make it look like a mermaid tail. I've done it, ripped it out, done it, ripped it out several times because I want to get it just right. Um, I'm getting close. I'm getting close, but I'm still not quite there. But this yarn, you guys, this has come out since I recorded. Um, so I kind of feel bad I haven't gotten to visually share it with you guys besides on my Instagram. This yarn, this is Mermaid Song, which is a hand-dyed yarn by Cattails. So I have teamed up with her to do some yarn and charm kits that are inspired by mythical creatures. And the very first one that we did was mermaids. So she dyed up this beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, it's mostly shades of blues with some green and some purple flecks in it. And it's on her sparkle base. And this is just, I, I love everything about this. So um, you can see all the rewinding that I did from, I had almost half of the um, scarf done and I decided to change it and ripped it all out. I'm learning as I continue designing patterns. That's just part of the process for me. Other designers may not have to do that, uh, but for me, to feel happy with the final design, I knew that I had to rip it out because I just, I had a better idea come halfway through the scarf. So, um, so yeah, ripped out a lot. But uh, it just, it crochets up beautifully. I'm imagining it would knit up beautifully. Actually, I know it knits up beautifully because Kat did a giveaway for this yarn and charm and the woman who won it knit up a pair of socks and they were just gorgeous. So um, I just, I didn't want this on my feet. I want this up, I want people to see this. So um, I'm working on designing a, cro a lacy crochet shawl inspired by mermaids, um, but it's probably going to take me a little while. That's why I don't mind sharing it. Um, if I do decide to share a design, it's because it's probably not coming out for a while. Uh, so. Uh, but if I do something quickly, I, I want to wait till it's completely done to share it because it just it adds stress on me otherwise. Um, but I didn't show you the charm. This was the yarn that she designed, and here is the charm that I designed to go with it. It's a little seashell, which I thought goes well with Mermaid Song because it's much like the shell that Ariel wears that her voice gets trapped in. So um, I keep. I keep the least pretty charms, so this one's got a little bit of resin that pulled at the bottom when I glazed it, so I didn't send that one to her. I kept it, but it's still cute. Um, and then the second collab has been released as well, which is <laughs> super duper fun. I kicked my yarn up because I'm going to design a child's skirt for my daughter. She wanted a dress and I'm like, one skein of fingering weight yarn is not enough to make a dress. But it's definitely enough to make a skirt. It is this fun, fun rainbow color that is appropriately named Unicorn Poop. So this is Unicorn Poop. And the charm that I designed to go with it, um, I she sent me the yarn first, so I matched the clay exactly. So it actually <laughs> camouflages in. But here is the unicorn poop charm. It's hard to focus, but it's just a pile of rainbow poop with a little unicorn horn on its head. But, I mean, it really blends right into the yarn. It's the exact same colors. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and both of these um, are still available in her Etsy store. It's cattailsyarn.etsy.com. I'll link to it um, down below in the description box. Uh, and then I just finished the third charm to go with our mythical creatures. So we only planned three. Um, kits and so the third and final one I just finished it I'm super in love with it I can't wait for you guys to see it um, it's very spe it's so special I bought my its own toaster oven to bake it in um, just because I realized if I'm gonna be baking a bunch of charms I should probably just get a little toaster oven instead of heating up my entire house to bake you know a little tray of charms um, also, I started, wor I started worrying about the toxicity of what I was baking. Not going to get into that because I don't want to ruin the charm. Surprise! But, you guys, it's really, really good. And I don't, I didn't get permission to give any spoilers from Kat. So, I don't want to say anything, 
but it think mythical creatures so we've done mermaids we've done unicorns um we're definitely staying in the mythical creatures theme I guess that's all I can leave it at because I don't want to ruin the surprise. I'm a surprise ruiner and I'm not going to ruin the surprise. Uh, so yeah, sorry, I forgot to talk about these. Um, you'll see more of them as I continue to design anyways. So yes, moving on to Let's Chat. Um, <clears throat> so where have I been? My schedule has been crazy, crazy. I'm not recording because I don't feel like it. I'm not recording because I have nothing to show you. Obviously I have things to show. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to stop crafting. Even if my hands give out on me, I'll find a way. <laughs> I'll start using my feet. I don't care. Uh, it's none of that. It's my schedule. My schedule has been all over the place. My husband's schedule has been all over the place. And with two toddlers running around, I really need um, his help to watch the kids so that I can record because I just, I've tried to record uh, while watching them and I just can't, I can't give them the attention that they deserve and need as toddlers. Um, and also the, the, this, I can't give the video, uh, the attention that it deserves. And then also when you try to multitask like that, um, it just, it is, it, it's, I believe it's harmful to your brain. I feel like I, um, kind of spun myself out of control trying to multitask too much. And, um, so I just didn't record. I just didn't even stress about it. It was like, if there's, if there's no time for you to watch the kids so I can record, there's no time. And so that's why I've been gone. And because, um, um, but yeah, so my schedule has just been all over the place and Josh's schedule has been all over the place. And we know that there's going to be changes, even more changes coming up. So I can't really plan on anything at the moment. Um, and as much as I love doing this, it's not a number one priority for me. Number one priority is my family. And then things fall in line behind that. So, um, I will record when I can. That's what I, I can promise that. I can promise I can record when I can. I just can't say when that's going to be. Um, so, uh, like I said, the best way to keep track is going to be, um, by subscribing to my YouTube channel because it'll show up in your feed when I release videos. So you don't have to come search for like, Oh, has she put up a new video? Like it'll just, it'll be there when you go through your feed. Um, but yeah, so just my schedule has been crazy. I really can't record while watching the kids. And just that's really the, the basis of it. Um, for other than that, all I want to talk about with the Let's Chat was um, I have been listening to this amazing book on Audible. So I got a Audible subscription gifted to me for Christmas. Well, Josh and I have been sharing it. And we've been... Um, Luckily, we were interested in the same books, so we've been taking turns picking which book we want to listen to next, even though it's something we both want to listen to already. And uh, Josh was actually recommended this book, and uh, we both we both fell in love with it. So the book's called Mind Hacking, and it's a 21-day program to help you re-engineer your brain. That sounds silly, but that's kind of the way that it's um, explained. So the author, Sir John Hargrave, he um, is knows a lot about engineering. He works in like business and marketing um, and entrepreneurship, but um, he uses a lot of engineering analogies at, as he's going through the book. And he talks about like programming computers and he relates it to programming your brain. The basis of this book is to create positive mental thinking habits um, to replace your negative mental thinking habits. And you may be thinking, I don't have any negative mental habits, but um, boy, listening to this book, I found more than I was looking for. I mean, I knew that I had some times that I had a little bit of uh, negative self-talk, you know, kind of talking myself down, um, which is funny because no one really does that on their own. That's kind of an external thing that you're taught to do based on what you hear. Um, but it, it's, it can be fixed. It can be fixed. So I have been listening to the book following it. I'm actually on day 20 of 21. Tomorrow is day 21 and I'll have finished the book, but the habits are going to continue. I have seen an enormous change in my energy levels, my positivity, attitude, productivity. Um, I am overall happier and 100% because of this book. So if you find yourself um, wanting a little bit more positivity in your life, you want to know how to, I mean it even goes over um, breaking down um, goals and making them achievable. 
Um, absolutely love this book. So mind hacking. Definitely check it out. Oh, and I didn't even mention this book is free. The book is free. I bought the audio book uh, because I have kids, as I've said, um, it's easier to listen and watch them than it is to try to read while watching them. So um, definitely love the audiobook, but there is a free copy out there if you want to read it. You can even like test a couple chapters um, and if you want to, to decide before you buy the book or buy the audiobook. So I will link to that in the show notes as well. Um, and that's everything. So feels good to record again. It feels weird to record again, but um, hopefully I can make this more regular. Until next time, guys. Happy crafting. Bye.